Amen. We do apologize. You know, from time to time, you have technical difficulties um, that's beyond your control. Um, being as though we're, we're doing the online and, you know, you're just not in control of the variables all the time. So, yes. And so, we have to make sure that we don't allow the enemy to come in between us, the body of Christ. Okay? We have to make sure that we... Um, all of us strive to have the peace amongst us and keep the bond of unity amongst the body of Christ. And sometimes, yes, you will have to go the extra mile. Um, if someone has um, come has come to you and they're asking for forgiveness, um, we should be ready and willing to forgive. Amen. But if they don't come to you, then the Bible says to go to your brother. If your brother have offended you, then you go to your brother, amen, and you try to be reconciled back again to your brother or your sister in the body of Christ, amen. Now, it's on you both ways. So we can never say, well, they didn't come to us because the Lord said if they offended you, you go to them. And then he says, if you offend them, you go to them. So it's, it's, it's on you, 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 you. It's always on you. So it's on both parties anyway. So no one gets to escape. All right. Because it's talking to each one of us and we each have that same responsibility one to another. So nobody gets off of the hook. God is just saying, Hey, I want to, I want it to get done. All right, somebody needs to make sure that this gets fixed. All right, so that there will be no division in the body. All right, because the devil does believe in dividing and conquering. And you know, there where there is unity, there is strength. And we gain strength one from another. Okay, we must always realize that nobody is an island. No man is an island all by yourself. We all need each other in the body of Christ. We need each other. You have something that I need, and I have something that you need, all right? Because God has invested it in each of us, and he didn't give any of us everything, okay? So you, you, you don't have everything, so without the others that are in the body, that's a part of the body, Amen. We would not be able to operate and function um, to our greatest capacity. All right. Because we need each other in the body. That's why it's a body. Amen. Um, the hand is not a body all by itself. It's a body part, but it's not the body. And see, the devil tries to get us to think that we're the body, like we're the whole body. You're not the whole body. I'm not the whole body. I'm not worrying about nobody else. I'm not thinking about them. Well, you better think about them and you better worry about them and you better be praying for them. Amen. There is a reason that the Bible tells us prayer and supplication for all saints. We ought to be praying and going into supplication for all saints because we are all in the body together. Pray ye one for another. That's very important. We cannot just simply go in prayer and pray for ourselves every time we pray and never pray for anyone else. Amen. Even in the prayer, um, the model prayer uh, that Jesus gave to his disciples, he said, our father. He didn't say my father. He didn't make it an individual thing. Amen. He made it a collective thing. And that's letting us know, hey, pray for each other because you're all one in the same body. And the devil tries to separate us in the body. And sometimes, you know, it's in the same church that you're in. You got little clicks here, click there, click there. Um, they don't like this group for whatever reason or they don't want somebody in their group. What, who, 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 what group is this? What group is this? Because I want to understand because I thought the church was brought with the blood of Jesus Christ. I thought he bought the church. And so if Jesus bought the church, then where do our cliques come in at? How do we get to separate ourselves from a part of the body? 
when we're all parts of the same body. And see, this is where the devil tries to get in, as I was saying, and he tries to work on us. When he get you in your separate clique, then he is dividing the body. Okay, and you know, if you take something and you, you cut me straight down in the middle, then my body is separated. And you know what's going to happen if my body is separated? Neither part will function. Okay, because that means you're going to have to separate my brain as well. Okay, and you know uh, your body is not going to live being separated. Now, do let me say this. Do let me say this. Um, the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. So what will happen is that the, uh, the, the, the good shepherd or, or the husband man, amen, that comes around and looks at the vines will see that there are things on the vine that don't belong, that's dying, that's drying up uh, um, because we didn't desire to do the will of God and we separated ourselves. We separated ourselves. It's not that God separated himself, but we separated ourselves from God. Now, how do we separate ourselves from God right in the church? When you separate yourself from the people of God that's following God, that's living for God, amen, and you get your own click and you go over in the corner, you're the one that's separated. We need to understand that you are the one that has separated from the body of Christ. And so therefore you're going to start drying up spiritually. See, we let the devil fool us and to believing because we can still shout, we still, some are speaking in tongue, running around churches, preaching, teaching, still doing those things, then believing that everything is okay. But listen, you working with gifts and talents, those things will still work because God has put that anointing on your life to, to do those things. But that does not mean that you are saved. That does not mean that you are in the will of a God. That does not mean that you are not in jeopardy of being cut off. So we have to understand that there is a difference between operating in gifts, all right, opposed to allowing God to have his complete will in our lives. Because when you separate yourself into a group of people and you have your own clique and can't nobody get in your clique, then you are a body to yourself because you're not Christ's body. Because his body is a unified body. So you have to get your own body to get in the click. I'm just trying to tell you. You have to get your own body to get in a click. Or you find this, that the body is fighting against the body. All right? It's like, like when people get cancer. All right? You have cells, and our cells, they multiply. They duplicate themselves. All right? But sometimes... There are cells that begin to duplicate themselves rapidly, more than what they should, and they begin to take over the body, all right? Therefore, creating what they would call cancer, okay? Because now these cells have gotten out of hand, and they are destroying the body. I have to interject the game. And say, listen to me. When it comes down to the body of Christ, the gates of hell should not prevail against it. Jesus said, upon this rock, I build my church and the gates of hell should not prevail against it. Listen, no weapon that's formed against the church uh, shall prosper. That is the people that's in the church, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, in the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
that are unified in the body of the Lord Jesus Christ and not people that's trying to have their own body. Because when you have your own clique, now you're trying to have your own body. And that just doesn't work. There is one body. It's not your body. You don't have your name. You didn't have no cross for nobody. None of us hung on Calvary. Only one person hung on Calvary, bled and died. Only one person was whipped with that cat of nine tails, had their skin ripped out, Amen. Had the thorns pressed down on their head. Amen. Had their hands and feet nailed to a cross. Amen. Had a spear pushed into their side and blood and water came out. Only one person did that. And that's whose body we are a part of. So, if we are all one in one body, how do we shut another part of the body out being as though it is the body of Christ? It is a part of the body of Christ. So therefore, we reject the body of Christ. See, you got to stop looking at people. And that's the problem. People look at people and they think they can do people however they want to do people. But what you have to understand is you're not doing it to people. You're doing it to the Lord. That's what he said. He said, whatever you do to the least one of these, you have done it unto me. Uh-huh. So while you are clicking it, click, 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 and you can't get in my click, now you got your own click, your own body. You done got, you you moving yourself away and out and, and are close to being cut off completely. Now, if you cut your branch off completely, you know what happens with that. They just get burned up into the fire. They get burned up into the fire. And so you don't want to be a part of that. So listen again. When you have your own clique, you have become a, a, a you have become a tool of the devil. And I don't care. I mean, if it's the good hair looking clique, all of us have good good looking hair. We make sure our hair is done up. Good looking nails. Our nails are done up. Good looking clothes. Our clothes are done up. Oh, we look so wonderful. We look so beautiful. Nothing's wrong with wonderful and beauty, beautiful and having these things. Nothing whatsoever. But let's understand this. That doesn't give us a separate body. We do not have the right to reject somebody else because uh, we don't want you in our good looking hair club or nail club or clothing club and fashion club. So you got to stay away from us because we have our own body. Because God is not in that. He don't care if they got nappy naps. They're still a part of the body. And how dare you reject them? Because they don't have what you have. Don't look how you look. Don't walk how you walk. Talk how you talk and do like you do. How dare anyone to reject them because of an outer appearance? Because it's really not about the outer. And you should keep the outer looking good. Now, I'm not saying that. But listen, it's more about the inner than it is about the outer. God said... I don't judge or look like man looks. He said, man looks on the outer appearance, but I look at the heart. That's what God said. So we do not have a right to separate the body of Christ. That is a trick of the enemy. Amen. He wants to divide and conquer. All right. And so that's what the lion does as he waits to try to see, all right, who I can get. This might be weak or they're away from the full, you know, and then maybe I can get a hold of them. And the rest of the ones are gone about their business, you know, or further away where I can probably get this one. Okay. They may not get away quick enough. All right. But listen, where there's unity, there is strength. So we cannot afford not to be unified. Listen, if at any other time, if at any time 
We needed to be unified. It is right now. It is too much going on in this world for the body of Christ, the church of triumphant, not to be sticking together and not to be, be unified. Talking about this, my church and this, my church. It's only one church. Okay. One, you may be in different locations, but there's only one church. So let's stop trying to act like, um, these people in this building is so much better than these people that's in this building when all these people are supposed to be in the same body, in the same church, one church, one church. Hallelujah. So we need not to uh, uh, be bickering back and forth. We need not to act like we don't know each other when we see each other at certain events and all of that kind of, this, this is foolish stuff. The stuff that goes on now is just so foolish. All right. It's been going on down through the years, but it's just foolish. That's foolish stuff. And it's even more foolish to me is when you, you know, you communicate with the people, but when you get around other people, now you want to act like you don't want to communicate with the people that you've been communicating with. Is that not of the devil? Is that not wrong? That's the same thing that Paul um, rebuked Peter about. Now, it was concerning the eating and the Jews and the Gentiles. And before Peter was eating with the Gentiles, amen, but when the Jews came, then Peter began to withdraw himself from the, the Gentiles that was now a part of the body of Christ. And he began to go over there with the Jews. And Paul was like, look, hey, hey, guess what? This is not right what you're doing because at first you were being with them. So, you know, in other words, people are sometime, all right? Sometimeiness has got to go out of the body of Christ. It doesn't belong in the body of Christ. There is no big I, no big you. All right? Listen, it's all about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. And we have to realize that because when we do opposite of that, it is not God's agenda. It is your personal agenda. And what happens when we have our personal agendas, God withdraws from that agenda. Because we're doing our personal thing. We can't get rewarded for your personal. That gets burnt up. Your personal agenda will be burnt up throwing the fire. I don't have time for my stuff to get burnt up throwing the fire. After I do all that, I have to try to do. You understand what I'm saying? Try to do for the Lord. I don't want nothing burnt up. So I want to make sure that I'm doing it like God wants me to do it. And that is by showing the love of God. He wants us to show his love. He says, love one another as I have loved you. So we have to think, would Christ treat another part of his body this way? we never seen Christ interact with his disciples in such a manner. And God doesn't interact. Listen, in that manner, with his own body, we are one body. So that's just crazy. Some of the things that what we will say church people do. That's just crazy. You have your own agendas. You're doing your own thing. You have your own click. And what in the world is a click? Everybody in the click going to hell? What's going on? Because if the whole click is separated from the body, then the click must go be going to hell. Because if the click is not in the body, Amen. Not joined to the body. The body is still going to go to heaven with or without the click. So the click has to get itself together and um, dismantle. See, it's time to dismantle these clicks. That's right in the house of God. And I had no idea. I didn't know I was going to go here. I got to go where the Lord leads me. Amen. And I believe in going where the Lord leads me. I don't know blood on my hand. All right, so these clicks have to be dismantled. Get out of the click. What what click? I'm just trying to be with Jesus. The, the Jesus click. And Jesus clicks so that there may be unity. That's the click that he's in. I don't know what click you in, but I know what click he in. That's the click I want to be in. Not the, the, the big head click. The big eye click. The only us click. It, it just befuddles you. 
especially in the same body. You know, that's that's crazy if my head is saying, well, you know what? I'm I'm better than my this body right here. So I'm gonna detach from this body. I'm gonna just go over here by myself. Well, the head is not gonna make it and neither is the body at that point. But thank God the body of Christ is not so, because God will move one thing and replace it with something else. We all have to remember the fact, and this is the truth. That everybody is replaceable. Never think that you are irreplaceable in the body of Christ. Because if you choose not to do what you're supposed to do in the manner that you're supposed to do it, God has someone else lined up to take your place. He has somebody lined up that will do the right thing with the right spirit. And serve him according to his Will, just like he did with Saul. He said to Samuel, how long are you going to cry for Saul? Seeing as though I have rejected him from being king. He said, I want you to go down to Jesse's house and I want you to anoint me another king. A man after my own heart. And the heart of the Lord is somebody that wants to do his perfect will like he wants to get it done and did david fail in certain things yes he failed but he repented and he didn't keep doing the same thing over and over again some people have been doing the same thing over and over again for so many years and they still doing the same stupid stuff we gotta stop doing stupid all right and let's get spiritual it's a spiritual warfare, and it's bad that now we got stuff going on that's fighting amongst the body and trying to destroy the body. You can't be jealous over anybody in the body because when you're jealous over somebody in the body, you're really jealous over yourself if you are part of the body. So that doesn't even make sense. We have to think about that. Oh, they sing better than me. Oh, I don't want them to sing. Because you know, you know, everybody want to hear them sing. Well, if God has blessed them to sing, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Let them get up there and let them sing so they can bless my soul so I can be edified. And you need to be pushing them. Amen. And lifting them up in prayer and encouraging them instead of trying to tear somebody down. The body trying to destroy itself. My God, the Bible even talks about uh, uh, disputes amongst those that are in the body. And it basically says, be careful, lest you end up devouring one another, destroying one another, killing one another. All right. Inflicting wounds and pain. And, oh, my Lord, running people out of the church. They end up going back in the world because you were so carnal in the building. People that are supposed to be saved, so carnal minded that you're running people out of the church back into the world. And that's not of God at all. And you need to repent. And you need to beg for the mercy of the Lord upon your life. Because if those souls be lost that you ran out the church. You're going to have blood on your hands. People come seeking for love. People come to be healed, not to be wounded. People come to get help. Not to be pushed out, but to be drawn in there because we are the body of Christ. Christ, not of ourselves. Christ. Paul said it is no more I, but it is Christ that dwelleth in me. It's a spiritual warfare. And you know where the main warfare seems to be a lot of times is with ourselves. If we can conquer the warfare that's out dealing with ourselves, oh my father, you talking about a great ministry, we would be able to do Amen. Individually and collectively, 
It would be out of this world. But the problem is we refuse to kill out these deeds of our flesh. And I've said before that your flesh, my flesh, our flesh is buddies with the devil. Your flesh is a buddy of the devil. My flesh is a buddy of the devil. And so you have to fight your flesh. I have to fight my flesh. It's an everyday thing. You have to fight it, fight it, fight it, fight it, fight it. And the problem is some of us will not fight it. Some of us have stopped fighting it. Some of us have given up on fighting it. And so it, the flesh is becoming stronger and stronger and our spiritual part of our life is becoming weaker and weaker and weaker. And this is not the time to get weak. This is the time to get stronger because the enemy has beefed up his tactics. He has beefed up his tactics and he's coming and bombarding from the left and the right and the front and the back. He's just trying to be all over top of us. He's trying to overwhelm us. And so if we don't stay focused on the Lord and the things of God, we are going to go under. So you can't afford, I can't afford to operate in our flesh. We've got to make our mind up. I'm going to kill this thing. It's not easy, but I'm going to kill this thing. Because if I don't kill this thing, it's going to kill me. And hell, I'm going to lift up my eyes. And you shouldn't want to lift your eyes up in hell. You understand? Because once you get in, you can't get out until the time of judgment that God allowed, have you brought up. Hell is not one a, 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 a thing that, that has a, the door on the hinges and saying it swings in and swings out. Oh, it swings in. It don't swing out. Once you get in, you in. No exits. Until God allows there to be an exit. And then it's just going to get worse. After that. Death, hell, and the grave. Is going to be cast into the lake of fire that burneth with fire and brimstone. So that's just going to get even worse than hell. So I wouldn't want to go there. You understand what I'm saying? I wouldn't want to go there. A click is not worth it. Some of you need to unclick yourselves from some of those people. Amen. They don't want to be your friend no more. Bye. See you later. Because I'm getting with the body of Christ. You got your own click right up in church. This ain't your church. This is a church of triumphant. That's the church that's going to make it to heaven, not the building. The building is not going to heaven. The church of triumphant is going to heaven. My Lord. Now, I had to be on that for a minute. Mm. Well, hallelujah, anyhow. So, finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. All right? In the power of his might. All right, in his rule, all right, in his authority, the authority of the Lord in God's dominion, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Be strong in the Lord in the power of his might, in the power of his dominion, in the power of his kingdom, in the power of his authority. That's what we need to be strong in. And the things of God. Because the enemy has set up in hierarchy of demonic spirits. All right? And, and, it, and it's, it, it's in, a, in a, what they would call it the heavenly realm. Now, I'm not talking about heaven where God resides. But the heavenly realm, the atmospheric realm. All right, from the earth to like the stars, the atmospheric realm. And these, these, let me wait, let me not go too far ahead of myself. So be strong in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, not part of it, but the complete armor, that ye may be able to stand against the wilds of the devil, against the tricks. That ye may be able to stand against the tricks of the devil. 
All right, because the devil has tricks. He has tricks. And some of us are missing that the fact that he has tricks and we're being tricked every day. And not even knowing that we are being tricked by the adversary. We need to put the whole armor of God on. Go with me to St. James, the fourth chapter. All right, because it said, put on the whole arm of God that ye may be that ye may be able to stand against the tricks, the wiles, the tricks of the devil. All right. And in that fourth chapter of James, that seven verse, it says, submit yourselves, therefore, to God. All right. You have to be submitted if you're going to put the whole armor up because you're not putting on somebody else's armor. You're putting on the armor of God. All right, these things that you're going to put on are things that represent God. Mm -hmm. The things that represent God. That's what we're put, really putting on. All right, now another scripture say, put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. But as we get into the scripture, you're going to see that in actuality, you really are putting on God. Okay? But it's, 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 it's making us look at so we can get the picture um, of someone being in a battle or um, a military force that is going and doing warfare. But as you look at the scripture and you see the things that it's telling you to put on, you know that it's telling you to put on the Lord. That's really what we're supposed to be putting on. All right, well, we, we'll talk about it. So you're going to put on the whole arm of God. And the reason being is that we may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil, that we can stand against the tricks of the devil. And then when we get over to John, as I was saying, it says, submit yourselves, therefore, to God. So if I'm going to put on the whole armor of God, now I have the armor of God over top of me. All right? I'm in the armor. I'm inside of the armor of God. And the armor is what's up front. And that's what we need is the armor to be up front. We want God to be up front. Amen. We want God up front. All right. And then not only do we want God up front, but when we can turn it around in another way um, at times. And let me give you an understanding of that. All right. Not only are we inside of the Lord, but the Lord is inside of us. All right. Jesus said to the Father that um, I am in you and they are in me. All right. He's in God, we are in him, and God and Jesus is in us, all right? Which is really one, okay? Inside of us. So when you get into the Lord, when the Lord comes inside of you, let me put it that way, he wants you to also get inside of him. But how do you really get inside of the Lord? You get into the body of Christ, but you get more into the Lord as you get in his word. And as you get into his word, his word will get into you. And, and so, not only is he, not only do he belong to do, do you belong to him, but he also belongs to you. Isn't that a wonderful thing? The Lord said to Israel, He said, You will be my people, and I will be your God. And that's a wonderful thing that we get to we get to own the Lord. He owns us. And you can say, He is my God. And him I will trust. 
And you know, he don't mind being owned by us. You know, he don't want to be ashamed. Amen. He don't want to be ashamed to call us his people. And therefore, we should not be ashamed to call him our God. Amen. So we want to make sure that we put ourselves in a spiritual place that we are right with the Lord. That we stay right with the Lord. Now, initially, Jesus put us in our rightful place. Amen. That made us right with the Lord. But just like you can get right with the Lord, you can get wrong. Okay? There's people that, you know, believe that once saved, always saved. That's not the book. All right? That is not the book. And I, I heard something today. Um, I think it was on TikTok. I believe it was on TikTok. Yes, yes, yes. I got a TikTok account. Uh-huh. Because these young people doing a lot of stuff. Uh-huh. TikTok. All right? And so... I heard somebody saying on there that um, we don't do judgment anymore. And they've always been in heaven. Like, we don't do um, judgment anymore. Uh, basically, we do mercy. Well, God has always been doing mercy, even when he was doing judgment. He still had mercy, or everybody would just been going to hell. Okay? So, he was still having mercy. But let me tell you something. He's still doing judgment, too. He's doing mercy, but he's doing judgment as well. And the devil want to make us think that God is not doing judgment so that we can do whatever we want to do, and then we run into the judgment. And then we really don't be saved thinking that we are saved. See, remember, he is a deceiver of the brethren, and he's accuser of the brethren. He is a deceiver, and he was a deceiver from the beginning. Jesus talked about that. He is a liar, and he's going to lie to you. That's one of his tricks, one of his wiles. And that's why you need to know the truth. Jesus said, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. See, that's what keeps you free from the lies of the devil is the fact that you know the truth that is in this word of God. And we are charged to live according to this word that God has given unto us. What would be the use of giving you the word and then, oh, well, they're not going to live it, not going to can't live it. And uh, what's the use? Well, what's the use? He give us the word so that the word can tell us what he desires for us and empower us through the Holy Spirit that is on the inside of us that we might fulfill the righteousness of the law. Not the ceremony stuff, but the righteousness of the law. That's still an obligation that we have. Oh, now you're trying to go back under the law. I didn't say I was trying to go back under the law. I didn't say I was trying to go back under the law, but the Bible said that we are supposed to fulfill the righteousness of the law. So you don't get out of having to do the will of God. God didn't just throw everything away. But yes, he did uh, throw away the ceremonial laws and all that. We don't have to keep that. No, we do have a land. We don't have to offer up blood sacrifices anymore. The sacrifice is the blood of Jesus Christ. Thank the Lord for the blood. Amen. But we still must fulfill the righteousness that is in the law. So he said, resist the devil and he will flee from you. At, that's after you submit. After you submit. Get yourself under the rule of God. Because you can take yourself from out of the rule of God. You understand what I'm saying? Why do, why do we think the Bible is saying submit yourselves unto God? You can take yourself from under the rule of God. And then you won't be able to resist the devil. Because you will not have the authority any longer. You won't have the power, all right? The power of his might. 
All right, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth. It's supposed to be being done in us on this earth, but how can it be done in us on this earth if we have not submitted to his will and therefore taking upon us the whole armor of God and being covered with the Lord? If we get out from the covering, then we are exposing ourselves to the enemy for defeat. You have to stay under the armor. And you have to keep the armor on at all times. You go to sleep in this armor. You wake up in this armor. You, you understand? You go about throughout the day in this armor. Wearing the Lord everywhere we go. And the devil don't want you to wear it. He don't want me to wear it. But we have to be insistent upon wearing the word of God. We have to be disciplined in our actions. And being disciplined is not always easy. Sometimes you want the easy road. But the easy road is not the road, most of the time, that God has necessarily chosen. This is a rough and a rocky terrain, serving the Lord. There are ups, there are downs, there are hills, there are valleys. And so we have to have something on, amen, that will be able to, to help us and assist us as we're going through in this spiritual warfare. So we have to resist the devil. That's where the fight comes in. Resisting, putting up a force against him. All right? Because he's putting up a force and you need to put a force back too. All right? Sometimes you got to use that deutimus power all right, that makes things happen because he's given you the authority to make things happen. To call those things that are not as though they were. And how can we possibly do it? We can do it by saying what he said. If he said, say it, then say it. If he said, do it, then do it. If he said you have it, then you have it. And if he's given you the authority, then use the deuteros, the authority. First use the authority and then use uh, the, the azusia is the authority to do the thing. And then you need to do the thing. Use that power. Use that deuteros to make the devil shut his mouth. To make the devil back off. To make the devil leave. To turn the devil's kingdom down. You're going to have to use some force against the devil. Holy Ghost force. Powerful force. Use the word of God. Speak it out of your mouth. As God has said, speak it. He said, and you shall have whatsoever you say. And sometimes we need to be saying some stuff to the devil and not being scared to say it when God told us to say it. Use your power. Use your authority. Use your deutimus. Use that explosive power. Let it come out of your mouth and get the work done. Because time is winding up. And if we want to hear the Lord say, well done, my good and faithful servants, then we need to get the servant like he's called us to serve. Or we're not going to hear those words. Well, I'm doing service, but are you serving like God want you to serve? That's, that's the measuring stick. You understand? Because if his measuring stick is right here, and we serve him right here, then we're missing the mark. And I do believe he's calling us up higher. You know, you know like the song, the song says, Zion is calling me to a higher place. Stand upon the mountain to magnify his name. Tell all the people and every nation that he reigned. Zion is calling me to a higher place. And God is calling us to a higher level of service 
in this day and in this hour that we are in right now where the world is, all right? This is a crucial time. This is a time like no other we faced in our lives. We have never faced a time like this. I know I haven't faced a time like this. I haven't faced a time like this in my natural life nor in my spiritual life. I have not faced a time like this before ever. Not this. And so, being as though we haven't faced a time like this, but guess what? This is our time. The body of Christ's time. You're in the body and you're here now. This is your time. We are here for such a cause as all of this that's going on around us that people might be saved. These are the last and evil days and God is calling us to a work for him. So we're going to resist the devil and he's going to flee from us. And the reason we can resist him and he's going to flee is because Cause we have submitted ourselves unto the Lord and we have on the whole armor of God. We're covered by God. And again, as I was saying, Christ is in us and we are in Christ. Amen. So it's going both ways. Christ is in us and we're in Christ. And you know, I was listening again today. I think it was today. Uh, I was listening at something else. And the gentleman was saying this, and I was like, oh, that's just, that's just, so, that's just so good right there. That was just so good. And, and this is what I'm going to share it with you, okay, just in case you haven't heard it. And if you heard it, just bear along with me, okay, because it's still good. But basically what he did is he had, um, can you get me a glove real quick? Somebody get me a glove if you can. If you can do that real quick, I would really appreciate it. Um. Why he's trying to get me that glove, why he's trying to get me that glove, it doesn't matter. It can be a plastic glove. It's fine. Um, why he's doing that, I'm going to just keep going, going, but I'll come back to that, all right? And so, now we've resisted the Lord. Um, I mean, resisted the devil, not the Lord. Don't resist the Lord. Uh, we've resisted the devil, and he's going to leave. He's going to flee. Thank you so much. Amen. So what the, the gentleman was basically saying more or less was the, he used the glove. Okay. All right. So this, this is, this is not something that I came up with. It's something that somebody else came up with, but it was good. So I'm going to show you. He basically used the glove in the fact that God wants to use us Okay, but in order for him to use us, in order for him to, this, this glove, this glove, this is like an image of your hand. It's got five fingers to the glove. Five fingers to the glove. This glove represents an image of your hand. But in itself, this glove can do absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. But. If I take my hand and I put it inside of the image now, because my hand is, my hand is inside of the glove. Now the glove can move. Why? Because my hand is in it. And basically what he was saying, we're in the image of God, but we really can't do what God wants us to do until God gets inside of us. And then we can do what God wants us to do. But the problem, I'm saying this part, the problem with us is that we don't get full of God. All right, listen, 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 listen. You have a glow. It's in the image of your hand, but your hand is not completely in the glove. Now, what in the world are you going to do with these fingers? Now, I'm saying this. You understand? What you going to do with these fingers? Because you're supposed to be able to use the glove, but you can't really use the glove to its fullest capacity if you can't get your whole hand in the glove. And some of us have too much stuff going on inside of us 
that's blocking God from getting his whole hand inside of his image. He is not able to take up all the space because we got other stuff blocking it. Other stuff is inside of the image that don't belong in the image. And we have got to empty ourselves out, become empty before the Lord and say, Lord, fill me up. And you're not going to be able to do spiritual warfare like this. And God don't have control because you have not submitted yourself unto him. Because God doesn't force himself. You know, God doesn't, you, you're going to let me have my way. God doesn't do that. God doesn't do that. You have to be willing and say, here am I, Lord. You can use, I want you to have your way completely. And that is not just so that you can play a organ, a piano, some drums, a guitar, a saxophone, a violin. It is not so you can just get up and hold a mic and shake a mic and preach the word. It is not just so you can teach the word, but it is so that you can live a holy and a godly life. Because if you do all those things, amen, and you are not holy and become one with the Lord as you should have, all of those things will have been done, but you will be lost. And I don't know about everybody else, but I don't want to be lost. I'd rather not do any of those other things and be saved. Do you hear what I'm saying? I'm not into gifts and all that, and I'm blessed with them, but I'm not into all that. I'm into how can I please the Lord? How can I make sure that I stand before him clean, that I stand before him pure, that I stand before him holy? How can I be holy for he is holy and he has told me to do what he has said in his word? How can I do that? How can, Jesus said, I always do the things that please my father. How can I make sure that I stay united with the Lord? How can I become more and more like the Lord? Because listen, when Adam and Eve, when they sinned and they threw us, you know, uh, the sin threw us into darkness. We got messed up. We got marred. We, we were jacked up. But God is the one that's able to take that clay that got messed up and make it and shape it again into another vessel. He is able to do it. And I'm so glad that he has done it. Amen. It's a spiritual warfare. And we got to become spiritual and get out of that carnality. Get out of it. The Lord said, love one another as I have loved you. And we need to look at our lives and we need to ask ourselves the question, am I loving the body of Christ as Christ has loved me? And most of the time you're going to have to say no. But we got to examine ourselves. How are we going to fight the warfare? Listen. He said, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Why are we trying to fight people? Instead of praying. See, you got to pray for one another. We have got to pray for one another. And our sight get taken off of our real job and our real duties when people start getting on our nerves. Because then you want to start, we start getting mad at the people. Instead of praying for them and saying, Lord Jesus, I'm asking you to have mercy on them. They're part of your body and they need to come up to the mark, you know, because we are one in one body. And I don't want to see the devil destroy them. I really want to see them be used by you. I want you to be glorified in their lives. That's really what we're supposed to be doing one for another. 
instead of turn one another down when something didn't go right. That's what we should be doing. Amen. We have to pray one for another because the devil is out trying to destroy all of us. And when we see our brothers and our sisters being destroyed because they are being destroyed, when people try to fight against you, the devil is destroying them and they don't even know they're being destroyed. Because they're being used to destroy themselves. You can't fight against another member of the body and expect God not to fight against you. He said it'd be better for you to have a millstone hung about your neck and you'd be thrown into the middle of the sea. That's everybody. From the head to the toe. God ain't playing about that. If you mistreat, if we mistreat one another, God has something for us. And it's not going to be something that you're going to like. It's not going to be something that I like. Nobody gets to get away with that. So put on the whole arm of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. Listen. Listen. These principalities and against power. The principal, the hierarchies of the demonic realm. This is what our fight is against and should be against and we being so simple letting the devil get us to fight each other so you on the devil's side fighting against the children of god you ain't on god's side when you fight against the children of god i'm just telling you that now you ain't on god's side you are siding with the devil i'm gonna just make it plain anybody that goes against another child of god you are fighting on the devil's side that's who side you on. At the moment you're fighting against another person that's in the body of Christ, you are on the devil's side. Okay? That's who side you on. I'm going to just make that plain. You're on the devil's side. Because God ain't fighting himself. So you don't switch sides to fight against somebody else. That's the fight against somebody that's in the body of Christ. You don't switch sides. You come around rolling your eyes at the same. I don't care what they did. I don't care what they did because God don't care what they did. You can't be rolling your eyes at people. We are called to show the love of Christ. And I did not say it's always easy. But I, what I do know is when you have the Holy Ghost down on the inside of you, God will enable you to push your flesh down. And woo, sometimes it hurts your flesh. And you got to do what the Bible tells you to do. You got to swallow your pride. Because your pride will be like, don't speak to them. Don't say nothing to them. Roll your eyes at them. Let them know you are mad at them. That's what the flesh will say. That's what the devil will be telling you. And that's where the division comes in. And we will be at fault. Not just looking at the person. Well, they ain't trying to do the right thing. Later for what they ain't trying to do. Because guess what? They ain't got no heaven or hell to put me in. Nor to put you in. God not going to judge me off of what they do. He going to judge me off of what I do. And he going to judge you off of what you do. You understand? So don't worry about that. You pray for them. You worry about what you do and how you do it. Because that's where your judgment is going to come in. You still got to do the right thing. Even if they doing the wrong thing. Make sure you're doing the right thing and no, the fault is not on you. Let all the fault be on the other person and be looking at them and thinking in your mind like, honey, mm, I feel sorry for you. I'm praying for you, though. I'm praying that God will help you. I'm praying that God will deliver you. All right? Because I just God's going to put a hurting up on you. You understand? Because you reap what you sow. And so that's what we need to be praying for each other. Not the one God to destroy each other. Because God's going to put a hurting up on them. They don't even realize that that was using them to hurt themselves. When they come up against you, they're coming up against God. You in the body of Christ, if you're doing right, you don't fight your own battles. Vince is mine, said the Lord. I will repay. That's what he said. None of us have the right to fight for ourselves in the wrong way. You understand what I'm saying? Where well, we're destroying other people. 
We don't have a right to do that. And you out, you lashing out, wounding people and all of that, and we thinking God's going to be pleased with us? No, God's not pleased in that. He's not pleased in that. And I'm not saying that sometimes you can't say certain things, because sometimes the Lord will have you to say certain things. But you got to make sure, and you know what I'm saying, that we're doing it, you know, not just doing it because that's what our flesh wants us to do. And we can't get in our flesh. All right? So we're wrestling not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers. The powers that we're wrestling against is delegated influences of demonic spirits. All right? Uh, jur over jurisdictions. This is the powers that we're wrestling against, not against the people that you're looking at. I can't stand them. Why I can't stand them? Because da 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 They being used by the devil. And their flesh. The devil in their flesh. Yes, it's worse when it comes from a, 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 a hallelujah, huck a machandering person. You know, because you basically expect that the world would do what they do. But you don't expect sometimes the household of faith. But Jesus said, I got my wounds in the household of faith. So we're going to get some of those too. Amen. But pray ye one for another. Pray that God will have mercy on them and realize they haven't come up to the mark yet. They still need some help. You know, people have been, been in the way for a long time. And you would think they would have overcome some things by now and been beyond certain things. You know, and God will let you see, like, nope, they still like they babies or something. Like, some babies are stronger than some, some of the people that's been in the church for Lord knows how long. Sometimes it's like, Lord have mercy, the baby's living better than you. It don't make no sense. And they got callings on their life. And they got titles over there. But they live, they the way they act and respond and the things that they do, some baby saints don't even do. And I'm just telling the truth. Amen. But that is because we have not submitted ourselves to God as we should. And so we're not resisting the devil like we're supposed to. It doesn't matter who we are. It doesn't matter how high or low. The devil use whoever lets him use him. He'll use me if I let him use, him, use me. He'll let, use you if you let him use you. He's just trying to stop the work from getting done. He knows it's a spiritual battle. He just get our mind off from the, the, the what really is going on. And now we ain't focused. That this is a spiritual battle that I'm supposed to be in. And so what I'm really doing, instead of me fighting where I'm supposed to be fighting, I'm all the way on the opposite side fighting. I'm fighting against what against what I'm supposed to be fighting for. That's crazy. And don't even know that you're doing it. But it's an eye-opening time. It's time to wake up out of sleep. Wake up, old sleeper. And realize that you're on the wrong side. And get back on the side you're supposed to be on. And I'm going to say it again. If you are fighting against the people of God, you are on the wrong side. I don't care who they are. And it doesn't matter what they've done. If you are fighting against them, thinking you are justified, you have no justification. Repent and get yourself reconciled with those people that the people of God get reconciled and get your life right and live like God wants you to live and get back on the right side. Because you don't want to stay on the side of the devil. That, that's the wrong side. You don't want to be on that side. I know I don't want to be over there. So, against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world. Those are those evil demonic spirits. And you should be able to look at the news and see just how bad it is and how bad it's becoming. And do you think it's going to get better? I say if at any time you was going to do something, you should have did it before now. This not the time to be doing wrong. This is not the time to be out of the will. This is not the time not to have unity. This is the time to have unity. This is the time to be praying. This is the time to be fasting. This is the time to make sure we kill our flesh and we keep it dead. Like never before. You hear what I'm saying? Because it's getting worse. And the enemy is working on you and working on you working on And got so many 
demonic spirits out here in this atmosphere. It's all over the place. Television. Oh, Lord, you can't even hardly watch a show. It's just a mess. I, when I see a show, it's like, oh, Lord, here we go. You know, you don't even want to watch TV. I don't because the foolishness is on regular TV. It's like, Lord, have mercy. Here we go. Now they don't put this in there. Like, listen, can you watch some clean television? Even the even the shows, and I like game shows, you know. But some of that, even the game shows that used to be family game shows, now they putting stuff in the game shows. Amen. That that's adult content like stuff. How are you gonna play with that? Play that with your children? Like this is just supposed to be a fun game. Can we just have fun? Can we keep the devil out? Can my children just have fun? Can you have a family fun game without throwing corruption in the game? But it's a spiritual warfare. And the devil is done slid in to all of these areas. So they got the television. He's in the TV. He's into different movies. He's into the online stuff. It's just, oh. And it's just like, oh, Lord, where, you, where can you hardly go where you can get some clean stuff? And some right stuff where people are not cussing and, you know, doing things, <coughs> excuse me, unseemly. You know what I'm saying? Now, um, one of the, uh, one of the things you can possibly get to watch some shows that, um, don't have much of all that foolishness in it, um, Paraflix, you know, it's, those shows are pretty much clean. From the ones I basically seen, they pretty much clean, you know. And I don't know if I heard any cussing, you know. They basically try to have clean, wholesome, more or less family shows, okay. But a lot of things that you've been hooked up in, woo, like Lord have mercy, you can't even get through a show without a bunch of cussing. And it's like, my Lord, is that's not even necessary? You don't need to go into the movie. I just want to see a movie without that person. You know what I'm saying? And all this stuff that's not even necessary to be in a movie. But that is what the world wants. That is what the world loves. Not everybody, but a lot of people. They want the junk. They want junk. And like now, people can't even just have a decent conversation. Now, or even on jobs, you know, you used to go look up to people that were in authority. You know, they 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 talk more sophisticated, more intelligent. But nowadays, they saying the F words, the M words, the, the, the B words. They, this that conversation too now. And it's like, what kind of stuff is going on? The devil is just taking over. Why do we need to curse? And use those those words. And, and it's like, you know, everybody's just eating it up. Like, this is the go thing. This is what you do. Why is it what you do? Why do you need to use profanity to have a conversation? It's not necessary. It isn't. And Lord have mercy, the people that just really just go at it. Or that That's almost next to every word or whatever that they say is that you have to be cursing. Then it really do start to make you think, perhaps, as they say, that their vocabulary, it must be small, so they're using these other words to fill it in. So let's make sure that we don't get entangled with this kind of stuff. All right? Let's make sure that we don't. Now, but we're, we're wrestling against these things. We're in spiritual warfare against these things. The principalities, the powers against the rules of darkness of this world. The, the demonic spirits that's in this world, all right, in the atmospheric realm. Against spiritual wickedness in high places. That's the atmospheric realm. We're going against these things. Well, we got to fast and pray to go against these things. Amen. It's not going to just, oh, all right, I'm just against it. No, we got we to gotta add more, especially nowadays. We have to add more. More fasting than you've ever fasted. <laughs> more than likely. You understand? If you really didn't fast, you need to be fasting. And not just doing a fast when your church calls a fast. You need to have some personal fasts of your own. Talk to your pastor about it. But have some fasts. You need to have some fast days in your life. And making sure that you have a daily devotion. You and the Lord. 
Daily devotion. Get up in the morning. Daily devotion. I say the morning time is the best time. All right, but maybe another time for you is better. If you can stay alert and stay awake, but I think seeking the Lord the first thing in the morning, then you before the Lord, he's the first thing. Amen. He has been put first. Amen. And then you go about the rest of your day. I happen to think that's a wonderful way to do it. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand, withstand in the evil day, not having, and having done all to stay. Now listen, you got to put the whole armor on so that you will be able to withstand in the evil day. These are the evil days. You don't have the armor on, you're not going to be able to withstand the wiles of the devil. And you're going to be a part of it. You're going to be acting in it, doing it, walking in it, operating in it. And so what I, if I don't have on the whole armor of God. See, the devil, he has no respect of persons. And the higher you are, um, the more he wants you. And we have to realize this. And we have to stay focused on what is really at hand. And because all these things are going on in the world, we're not careful. We can get caught up so much into these things that we lose the real focus of what's going on. It's something behind all of these things. So we got to keep our spiritual eyes open. So we want to be able to stand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Stand therefore. We got we to gotta keep on standing. Once you did everything you could to stand, you have to keep on standing. Having your loins girt about with truth. What is truth? Thy word, O God, is truth. I said we're really putting on God. What is truth? Thy word, O God, is truth. What is the word? In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. So really, what are we putting on? We're putting on God. And we're going to have on the breastplate of righteousness. Uh-huh. No, breastplate of righteousness. We are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Uh-huh. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Now here is the word of God again. The word of God. The word of God. The word. The word. The word. The word. The preparation of the gospel of peace. All right. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my pathway. All right. We want to make sure that we have the word of God that's governing us. That's directing us. A good man's footsteps are ordered by the Lord. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery dots of the wicked. He is the author and the finisher of our faith. Listen. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fire. The fiery dots are going to come against us, but it is our faith that quenches the fiery dots. Listen, Ooh, he be throwing them at us. I know he be throwing them at me. You hear what I'm saying? He be throwing them at me. He be throwing them at me. And sometimes you need to be praying for yourself. Like Jesus prayed for Peter. He said, I pray that your faith fail not. You need to be praying. Lord, don't let my faith fail. Lord, don't let my faith fail. Because some things get really, 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 really trying. You understand? These are the times that try men's souls. And I mean, you got to go deep. You got to go deep with some of the stuff that be put on you in these days. Let me talk about myself. I got to go deep with some of the stuff that have come in my life in 2020 and rolled over into 2021. Oh, it's taking me deeper. You understand what I'm saying? Oh, yes, honey. Oh, my faith is getting tried. You better hear what I'm saying. The trial of your faith work is some patience. It's been being tried. 
Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation. He is our salvation, and the sword of the spirit. All right, which is the there it is again, the word of God. The word of God. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. All right, capital S, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, and watching, not in your spirit, praying in the Spirit of God. You want to get in God when you praying. You want to get in God when you praying. You want to get in God. And I'm not saying you have to be speaking in other tongues, because some people say that's what you feel, that's what praying in the Spirit is. That, yeah, sometimes that's praying in the Spirit. But I think praying the word of God, you also praying in the spirit. All right. You may not necessarily be praying um, in tongues. The anointing of God is there and you pray. I say you praying in the spirit. And watching there unto with all perseverance and supplication for what? All saints. We're supposed to be praying for all the saints. Everybody that's in the body of Christ, because it's not just about us, it's about the whole body that's in this spiritual warfare. We're not wrestling flesh and blood, it's a spiritual thing. It's not about flesh, it's a spiritual battle. And you cannot fight a spiritual battle with a natural weapon or natural weapons. You have to understand that. Amen. I pray that you have really received something on tonight. Amen. From the Lord. Amen. To turn your life around. To change your life for the better. Amen. Or to encourage you to keep on keeping on doing what God will have you to do. <coughs> Excuse me. I pray. Amen. That you receive everything God wanted you to receive on tonight. Amen. And I know he wanted you to receive or he wouldn't have given me the words. Amen. To speak unto you. Amen. As the mouthpiece of our Savior. Amen. We're asking if you would to go to Give the Five. Amen. Right now. And be a blessing unto the ministry as God has blessed you. Again, remember, you cannot beat God's giving. None of us can. We can try, but you'll never outgive God. And the more you give, the truth of the matter is, the more He really will give to you. Amen. And all you got to do is put Him to the test, and He will prove Himself. He will prove himself. Nobody has to prove him. He will prove himself to you, you, and to you. Amen. Father, I'm asking that you will bless each and every individual. Oh, God, that's here and watching and listening to your word today. We thank you for them. We ask you to give them that increase, oh, God, in their lives, first of all, spiritually, oh, God, in you. Those that need to connect to you. Oh, God, let them connect to you. Save and deliver them. Those that need to reconnect, reconnect them, oh, God, to thyself. Oh, God, that they may join hand in hand with you, oh, God, that they may be complete and made whole and one in the body of Christ. Oh, God, we ask you to continue to touch and heal bodies, heal minds, strengthen. Oh, God, the feeble knees, strengthen them right now. Give encouragement, give peace. Oh, God, lead and guide according to your perfect will. And we praise, glorify, and magnify you for victory in Jesus' name. We love you, Lord. Amen. God bless you all and know that we love you, but God loves you best. Be blessed.